Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about transitioning into a diesel pusher. Whether you don't have a RV at all at this point or you have a class A, B, or C gas model. And it's not as easy as just changing the fuel type. There's a bunch of things that you should look at. And we compiled a list when we were looking at diesel pushers. And today that's what we'll show and go through with you. Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel, RV Into Retirement. Our channel is about new adventures, full-time RVing, meeting new friends, and RV tips. And today what we're gonna talk about is our transition from a gas Class A that we had a Winnebago Vista into a diesel pusher. And as I said in the introduction, there's a lot more to know than just changing uh, your fuel type from a gas engine to a diesel engine. There are a lot more complexities to look at and think about while you're going through this process. Our video is going to focus on finding a, a high quality, affordable diesel pusher. And when I say affordable, I'm talking about anywhere from 50 to maybe 150,000. There's lots of other people who do videos on the higher end uh, RVs and, and diesel pushers that will cost you anywhere from a half a million on up. But we're gonna focus on uh, transitioning and, and maybe somebody with their first diesel pusher. So recently our good friends are transitioning from a diesel pusher. And what I did is I dug up our old list that we put together and I'll publish the full list uh, at the end of this video and also on our website. But uh, I could tell and when we were helping them that it, it is confusing. There are a lot of things to look at. And we're gonna talk about the systems and the functionality and not so much about the interior. The interior's pretty easy. Uh, you know what you want for your layout and you know what you want for your design and your bathrooms and your kitchen. But finding, uh, looking at the outside of the coach and the technical and mechanical aspects is equally important, if not more important. And anybody will tell you, diesel pushers are definitely more expensive to maintain. So it's important that you be selective in the models that you get. I have my list here. And one of the first things on, on the list is that it must be a diesel pusher and not a front engine diesel. That was important to us. We were going from a gas model, which had the uh, engine right between the driver and the passenger and the front engine diesel or a Fred. If you're looking online, you'll see them advertised as Freds. Uh, all still has the engine up front and between the passengers and, and the driver. They tend to be, I never drove one, so I don't actually want to say what they tend to be, uh, other than it's going to still be noisy and it's still going to be hot up in the driver compartment where a diesel pusher with the engine in the back of the coach and pushing the coach along is going to certainly be quieter and cooler. Now, the second thing for us was that it must have a side radiator. And why a side radiator? So if you look out there, at both older and newer coaches, the majority of the high quality, high end coaches have side radiators. And there's a lot of debate on whether the airflow is better on the side of the coach or if it's better behind the coach. Um, I tend to believe that it's better on the side. But what there is no debate on is when you have a rear radiator, it blocks access to the engine. And either you have to go from underneath the RV or into the bedroom of the RV and remove an access panel just to get to simple 
things such as changing your belts uh, uh, if, if your belts are worn. And you can't inspect them either. So one of the things that I do is I walk around before each trip. I'm going to check my, my belts to see if there's any fraying or worn uh, out at all. So, and it's something you should carry a spare so that you can change yourself. I imagine that would be very difficult on a, a rear engine model. I wouldn't say it's a deal breaker uh, for those of you who are looking for a coach, uh, a quality diesel pusher. There are some uh, that are out there that are very well made and have a, a rear radiator. Just for us, it was a personal preference. It's one less thing to avoid and a lot less in maintenance fees per hour uh, for a mechanic to get in there and get access. Plus, my wife is pretty uh, strong about uh, not wanting people going into our bedroom and, and working on engines. The, the second preference that we had, and it's not a, sh a deal breaker either, was a semi-monocoque chassis. And what we were looking at in the semi-monocoque chassis, I'll put some information in the links below, but essentially it's it's a more rigid structure around your RV. And the ones that we were looking at were Country Coach. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll post a picture right over here of a recent person with a Country Coach that ended up having an accident. They went off of the road and it rolled on its top. But as you can see in the photo that it didn't even crush down on the RV and they have a steel structure that's the semi-monocoque structure around it. Along those lines, some of the manufacturers used their own chassis and so they built it. Uh, Country Coach had a Dynamax ch uh, chassis for travel, which we have has their own proprietary chassis where a lot of other manufacturers just buy a Freightliner or a Roadmaster chassis, not that they're bad, but the ones that if you're looking for something high quality and designed around the coach that you're buying, those are things to consider. So when we were looking, there's also the engine that is used. And unlike a gas model, which the vast majority are using Ford V10s right now, the diesels, they can come in CAT mostly and Cummins, and then you'll see some Detroit diesels out there. And there's certainly a lot of controversy between different models in the CAT line and different models in the Cummins line. And I will put a link, it's irv2.com, and it's a good resource to do a lot of your research about which models maybe people are having problems with. So we had in our country coach a Cat C9, and we were very happy with it. Some of the models have Cat 12s and 13s, and uh, I don't recall off of the top of my head one of those had an issue, and then with Cummins, we have an ISM, and I think the ISLs are also good, but there's some out there that people have had complaints on. So I will leave it to you to do your own research on that. I think it's, it's a very handy research, this irv2.com, and we went there for a lot of things. You can research the engine, the transmission, and the manufacturer itself and, and find a lot of good data. And people are very helpful to ask questions and uh, answer them. A few of the other things we were looking at was the wheelbase of the RV. The wheelbase divided by the length of the RV, you want greater than 52, 53%. The, the larger the number, the better, the more stability it is. And there's a lot of articles on that. I'll put a link in the description below and you can see why that's such an important factor for the stability of your RV. Now, some smaller things that could go either way were, was it an all electric coach or did it have propane? Our first country coach had propane and a RV refrigerator and 
One of the things that we didn't like, or a couple of things we didn't like about the RV refrigerator was that it would ice up all the time. It didn't work well in hotter temperatures. We actually replaced it with an Amish unit from JC Refrigeration, which is supposed to be a, a very high-end product, but it still gave us problems in the heat and the cold. And traveling in the Southwest, we, we lost a lot of food doing that. And then there's the issue of uh, fires with them. And so that became one of the deciding factors when we decided to go full time and we'd be running the fridge, you know, 24 seven year round that we wanted to go to a residential style refrigerator. And so it's about a thousand dollars for the refrigerators that are direct replacements and then you have labor on top of that so i wouldn't stay away from a, a coach just because it it had it and depending on your use whether you're going to be full-time part-time or weekender it would be up to you to decide obviously that whether or not uh, you wanted to live with those those issues that it may have in our second coach to go full-time we decided we wanted a uh, residential refrigerator. Some of the other things were heated bays. And so, uh, again, this is going to depend on your use. And if you're full-time, and you, even if you go to the south, if you might have heard about last year in Texas, they had a lot of freezing weather, and it ruined a lot of RV hot water tanks because they expanded. And so... It, you do want to make sure that your bays are heated and either by propane or by an aqua hot, which runs off of your diesel fuel. Uh, we have the aqua hot or actually Oasis. They're uh, two of the most popular brands of hydronic heating. And you can run that off of your diesel fuel tank and make sure that you're uh, plenty warm and your bays are warm. Along those lines, we were looking for heated floors, but that, that again is more of a, a cosmetic thing. So on the, on the things that to avoid, one of them was aluminum radiators. And so when you're looking at some of the older coaches, and when I say older, we were looking in the 2000s, maybe even late 1990s, uh, and early 2000s, some of them used aluminum radi radiators. And while aluminum is a great uh, product to dissipate the heat and it's lightweight, some of them were made uh, with bad welds. I, I think I read that some had epoxy and um, it, it just isn't good. A lot of people end up replacing them. Again, you'll find this on the forums. if. If you find a particular coach that you're looking for, search the forums and find out what the problems are with them. Uh, and just about every coach has an idiosyncrasy, but a, a radiator could be a very expensive repair. Another thing we did not want is DEF, and DEF is diesel exhaust fluid. And not only did we not want it from just another product that we have to buy and fill up when we're filling our tank with diesel fuel. But a lot of people are having problems with the DEF sensor head and there's a, a backlog on getting it repaired or replaced. And uh, just perusing the Facebook various groups, I've seen a lot of people have to cancel their plans because the coach would be in the shop for a couple of months waiting for replacement. And what this uh, DEF problem that they're having, uh, it puts your coach into limp mode, which means you're traveling at a, a snail's pace and it'll only allow you to do that for so long before the computer system will shut you down on it. So uh, you don't want to end up with a, a large towing bill. We didn't. We bought a, a 2009 coach and it doesn't have DEF. And it's quite interesting. Uh, our friends who were looking at coaches, they went and looked at a 2011 Monaco and it didn't have DEF. 
And when they showed me the placard for the the coach, the frame itself was made in 2009. And, and so the frame and the engine uh, came together. So they probably had it left over at the plant because it was a slower time and they were building on these older uh, chassis. But they, you have a 2011 structure on a 2009 frame and you get around the DEF. One other thing we were looking at was coaches that had flex steel uh, seats. And they had a problem with their ultra leather that it was cracking over uh, time. And uh, I don't think they're in business anymore. Uh, some of the manufacturers will send you replacement. I think I've seen Tiffin was doing that if your, your seat deteriorated. But we try to stay uh, away from the Flex Steel product and we were looking for coaches that had Villa uh, seats. Like I said, every coach seems to have some sort of idiosyncrasy with it. When we were first looking, we saw a Holiday Rambler and it was built on a, I believe it was a Roadmaster chassis and it had uh, four airbags and there was something with the four airbag issue and the frame that just wasn't good. On the coach that we ended up buying, which was a country coach, it had a dry PTO or a power takeoff. And so that was its idiosyncrasy. We had to have a new one manufactured that was a wet PTO and um, it, it delayed our trip probably for two months waiting for them to repair it. With our, our current coach, uh, they're susceptible to delamination. I mean, each coach has something that you need to research and be aware of, but the basic bones of some of the older coaches that that are out there, they, they're really good. They have that strong semi-monocoque uh, structure. They're made with higher quality materials. All you need to do is go to an RV show and uh, open up some of the doors and cabinets on the newer coaches. Look at look at the paint finish. I've seen some that have this high gloss paint finish on them, and it's filled with dust particles uh, from the factory, and it it just looks horrible. And then go out and look at a 2000 uh, coach a 2000 to 2009 coach and and take a look at the quality that was made back then. There's a lot of good coaches uh, that are out there. Uh, the ones that, that we would stick to uh, if we were looking again would be uh, some of the older country coaches, the Four Travels, some of the Monaco's, Holiday Rambler, uh, even some of the older Tiffins that fell into the the must have and the must not have list that we have. I guess we can go on forever on some of the things to look for. So I just touched on the major ones that were important to us. Um, there's a lot of things we definitely highly recommend getting a uh, inspection done once you've narrowed it down. But you can narrow down quite a bit on your own by uh, reviewing these things, educating yourself, looking at a lot of different coaches, asking a lot of different questions to owners, uh, not the salespeople and not inspectors, but ask previous owners of what their uh, experience is with the coach. And then once you've narrowed it down and it hits all your checkpoints, then hire an inspector to go through the whole coach. And as I was telling my friends, an inspector is not a guarantee that they will fix anything. So it's not a warranty when you have an inspection. They're not gonna fix things that they missed in, in most cases. And so be aware of that. They're, they're looking at a coach as it is uh, there today and, and what they know about it. If you have any questions, we invite you to leave them in the comments below. We'd be happy to help you research uh, your next RV. 
whether it's a diesel pusher or gas. And uh, we wanted to say a big thank you to all our subscribers. Thank you for uh, coming along on this journey and uh, going along with us. And, and, take, and we appreciate all the comments that we get from you guys that we've helped. It really uh, makes us feel good that we helped somebody along. And uh, if you haven't already done so, please visit our website. It's www.rvintoretirement.com. We just opened a merchandise shop where we have some cool t-shirts, mugs, and stickers for you. Until, that, until next time, <laughs> thank you for watching and have a great week, everyone.